Hi everyone, if you went to my profile page, you'll see that my comment said that I've been going to a few movies, so why not? Let me review some of them for you right now. Uh, first movie I've seen during my volley of movie going experience thing, yeah, was Paul Blart Mall Cop, and this stars Kevin James as a New Jersey mall cop during this Die Hard esque invasion. And I knew it was going to be stupid, but I thought it was going to be fun stupid, so I said, hey, let's go watch this. I was half right, and then I was half wrong. It is funny stupid. I sort of got what I was expecting, which was good, but some of the actors, a little overacting, some of them uh, trying a little too hard to be funny, some of them not so funny, and definitely the main actress playing the love interest because well let's fucking face it you can't have any movies anymore without a fucking love interest whatever I guess I don't know I, I, I'm not even gonna begrudge it for that but really the actors they played they picked for this thing wooden as all hell very bland very uninteresting she had really no emotional range she had one friggin emotion and one friggin expression by the way was her mouth like half hanging open like the whole time like like Jesus Christ lady like flies can make fucking nest in your mouth they don't it never fucking closes and, and anytime she's on the screen and like it's focusing on her a scene it just drags on it's fucking abysmal uh, and also the story like I said I wasn't expecting much, but it really felt like it was falling apart towards the end. It really felt like he lost focus, like, for his goal. Like, in the beginning of the movie, there's this whole montage that he's training to be a cop uh, to make, you know, this better life for, like, you know, like his girl, his, like, his little girl, his little daughter, his wife left him, he's living with his mom, which makes him the quintessential loser. But at the end of the movie, like, he saves these people, he, he stops the bad guys, they offer him, like, the job position, like, hey, you know, like, you know, that's some real, like, nice work there, Kevin, James, Blart, Paul, whatever the hell your name is, uh, how about you join the police force? It's like, no, this mall still needs securing. It's like, what about your little girl? What about your daughter? What about your hopes to be a cop? Like, fuck it now, because you're never going to see nothing. Like that happening in the ball again. You're still gonna be writing your little. Uh, it's just not good. Liked it and then I didn't like it. It's it's passable. It's very passable. I would only recommend you watch this once it gets on basic cable. <laughs> Next on the movie list, it's going to be Yes Man. It's the Jim Carrey movie where he basically says yes to everything after going to the self-help seminar. I liked it a lot better than Paul Blart Mall Cop, I'll tell you that much. Not a spectacular comedy, but a decent, all-around good comedy. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I would, you know, I would recommend Yes Man. I would recommend the rental when it comes out. If you have a bunch of friends and you're bored on a Friday night, go see in a theater. I think it's still in the theaters. Probably not. Wait for the DVD and rent it. It's good. It's good. I really can't say much about a movie that's like actually all around decent. Not great, but it's decent. Give it a shot. Yes, man, thumbs up. Next movie I saw was Coraline, and I know that's still in the theaters. I know that some theaters are still playing in 3D. If you can watch it in 3D, go fucking watch Coraline. In fact, go watch it regardless if it's not in 3D in your local theater. Go fucking watch Coraline, if you haven't already. It is a modern age fairy tale. This thing is fucking beautiful. Now think if you loved Nightmare Before Christmas, if you loved Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, you will love this movie because it is like Nightmare Before Christmas if it was not made on crack and then it was made on PCP 
that doesn't make any sense, but it's the best way I can describe it. Because basically the whole story is this little girl moves into this place and is depressed because it's boring there. It's, it's weird neighbors that, like not weird fun, but just weird weird. Like her mother's always busy, her father's always busy, they have no time for her, so she's always like bored, she feels a little alienated, and she crawls through this little door in her, like, little, in her house, little door, and she ends up in this parallel universe, or parallel reality, or whatever, pretty much this dream world, but it's like exactly like her home, except very fun, very whimsical, very magical, and everyone has buttons for eyes. And that really breaks down quickly, like, well, not quickly, about halfway through the movie. That starts breaking down, and she starts seeing it for the evil it really is. And it's, like, fucking great, man. It, it's creepy, and it's fucking well made. In fact, the first five minutes of that is going to make you fucking cringe with this little sequence that opens with it. And I'm not going to say it because I want you to see it. It's so much fun. Go see this movie. It's going to win Animated Movie of the Year. I know this. I know it's going up against Pixar's Up. Fuck Pixar. I know I love I love Pixar. And they always win this kind of stuff. It's going to win. It's going to beat up. You just watch. I'm calling it. <sighs> the next movie I saw... Man, I, I saw a great movie, and then I saw the worst movie I'd probably seen in years. Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun-Li. Why did I see that movie? I never saw trailers for it, so I didn't know what I was expecting. I didn't even know what was coming out that day. I guess I was expecting, like... Remember the 1994 like Street Fighter movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme as, you know, like, the American guy who... And Ron Julia as M. Bison? Like, that was stupid! But it was so stupid it was funny. That's what I was expecting. Like, I was expecting this movie to be, like, kind of like that, but, you know, obviously, like, more serious business. If you saw, like, anything about it, it really was trying to pull off, like, you know, like, serious business, like, whatever. This is, and really what it is, it's bad. And it's not so bad it's, like, funny, and no, so bad it's good. It's just bland bad, the worst kind of bad you can be. And what it is, like, if you ever saw an action movie in the last five years on your basic cable or antenna or satellite or wherever the fuck you're getting your entertainment from, on 3 a.m., and you mix that all together, you mix all those action movies you see, like, at hours that no one can possibly be awake for, you blend that all together, and you get this movie. I mean, how many action movies have you seen where the main bad guy's plot is, like, real estate? Pretty much that would make for a basic movie, and you see that here too. But the problem is your main villain is Bison! M. Bison! And it's fucking real estate! How do you, how do you fuck that up? You have like... I don't get it. You have this source of all these like martial artists with these special powers, and that's your fucking story. Really. And none of these people use their powers. Like if you saw trailers, you saw like Chun-Li like in her training mode, like building up her energy ball. She only uses that in one shot. That was a fucking Mortal Kombat ending ripoff where she pretty much shoots it at Shao Kung. Oh, I'm sorry, M. Bison. Pretty much shoots it at M. Bison and knock him off a ledge. It doesn't die right off, but he's pretty much incapacitated and she kills him later. Actually, I can't even remember how that movie ended. I think I'm trying to block it out of my memory, thank God. No one was worth watching in this movie. Well, that's not true. Michael Clark Duncan as Balrog was pretty fucking awesome. In fact, it kind of tricked me in the beginning of the movie when he came in. Like, when he smashed in through the window and you see Chun-Li's father go like, <gasps> Balrog! And then you see Michael Clark Duncan, like, look at the screen and go like, Hey! Yeah, fucking awesome! And then M. Bison comes in. It's like, fucking shit! You know, when I saw M. Bison, I thought he was Vega. And when I saw M. Vega, when I saw Vega... I thought it was Casey Jones from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because his mask was fucking huge. Like it looked like a hockey mask, and his claws were fucking huge too. Like they looked like like machete. They don't look like elegant like little like claws. Like you remember the '94 like Vega, yeah, underdeveloped, but like at least the guy looked perfect for Vega. This guy, it really looked like Casey Jones. He had like oily like long black hair, like a like giant mullet y. He didn't tie it back like, like Vega's supposed to. And they build him up to be this badass. He kept 
punked by Chun Li like easy, easy. So fucking horrible and so fucking bland. How the fuck do you pull that off? Ugh. I was raped by this movie. I was raped visually. I, I was raped, like, verbally. Like, like through my ears. If there was such a thing as smell of vision, I would have ra been raped up the nose. I, I swear to God. Like, ugh, how do you screw this up? <sighs> 